Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to PAX. Please take your seats and silence all cell phones. Our program begins now. This part. I'm gonna wait for this to end, like Pat did, so it doesn't get me content blocked on YouTube. <laughs> Is this like a PAX official song? I don't know. They oh, license yeah. it for Twitch, but not for YouTube. Okay. Oh. But anyways, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the personal history of Video Games Chapter 3. Yay. Thank you all for coming out. I'm your host, Eric Kinius, and I'm from Canada, but enough about me. We're here for my guests. First on my left is Khalif Adams. What's up, y'all? How you doing? From Spawn on Me. Happy Sunday. Yes, happy Sunday. Sunday Pax Sunday, is almost Sunday. over, thank goodness. Next to him is Abby Russell from Giant Hello, Bomb. It's me. <laughs> and next is Kate Stark from Twitch, from Canada from as Canada. well. Yeah. yeah. Finally, another Canadian on this panel, finally. And at the end is Rami Ismail from Vlam Beer. Hello, welcome everyone. How's your PAX going so far? Good, good. good. A lot of running around. Been yeah. real busy. Yeah. Very busy. tired. Rami? I accidentally announced a video game and I'm now dealing with everything. <laughs> yeah, I walked past oh. you sitting at a booth and I was like, that looks like a Rami game, but I've yeah, never heard of it before. It was, not, it was not supposed to happen. It was our eighth birthday like as a studio yesterday and we thought, you know what, we'll just sneak in <laughs> like just a build of the game for like two hours so the fans can play it and you know get some feedback. And at exactly that moment, just a crew of IGN people walked by. Oh. <laughs> so I guess now it's life. And Perfect. I don't even have a name. I have no, t I have no oh, the geez. game has no name. The game has no date. It has no release. It has no price. I was just going to bug you for a Steam platform it is on and they're like when is this coming out i'm like i have you maybe tell us. <laughs> so you know what we've learned this week is video game players love seeing video games early and not judging anything about them at all we have no puddles in them so i Perfect. think we're good. oh you're saving yourself a lot of trouble no buy. Uh, so what this panel is about is talking about how games have integrated or not integrated have been a part of our lives more than just like getting a high score or being number 1 on the leaderboards while that all is well fine and good um, this is more about how this has uh, affected our lives with people and our relationships like with family or friends or communities and that sort of thing. So I try to start off with a story to get the ball rolling. This time I have a new story, thank goodness. Um, so uh, I'd say about 10 years ago or more, I was playing, I was way into playing a mod for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas called Multi Theft Auto. It's a very good multiplayer mod for San Andreas. Um, but there's mostly racing, so I just hang out on this racing server. Um, not doing schoolwork, whatever. Um, but I ended up like hanging out with a bunch of people from England, and that was all fine and good. And then it kind of got like you kind of meet your people that you get more closer with. And I, there was a guy named Alex, and we chatted, and that was fine. And then like he met, or there was a girl named uh, Charlotte that was there, and then Beth. And then eventually, like the server kind of went away, and we added each other on Facebook, so we saw each other there. And then I went to England for uh, summer school and met him. So that was one thing, as I got to meet someone from from a mod of a game in another country and stayed with him for a few days and hung out, and that was fun. But just this past summer, he and Charlotte got married, and they met through this multi-theft auto server, and it's the weirdest thing. And then like seeing, looking through the comments and seeing Beth from that server comment on his wedding pictures of just like the weirdest conglomeration of people from different parts of the world, including me, um, different parts of the world, seeing these people that who met online get married, and yeah, that was like 10 years in the making as well. And we all saw it coming. Yeah. Now you have to marry Beth. <laughs> yes, now I have to marry Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's complete the circle. It's Beth is watching the Twitch stream now like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's an example of a video game bringing people together. And we had sort of a community, but it brought more individuals together and meeting people from far away. And, and yeah, does anyone else have any experience with that in particular? If not, we can move on. But... I mean, I once got married through a video game. Right. That yeah. happened once. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my then wife, uh, well, then not wife yet, but now then wife. This is hard <laughs> to explain. We got divorced recently. Uh, but that's okay because we still love each other and like, are very dear friends. But uh, we met through the games industry, and she actually convinced, uh, we actually, when we, when we moved in together, she, uh, we would always play Destiny together. It was just, we bought two TVs, we put them next to each other, that was our entire living room, which is the two TVs, there was nothing else in there, uh, because we just moved in. And we decided to look for a game we could play together, and the only game we could play together was, was Destiny. 
Um, so we, we got that, and she, um, I knew some people at Bungie, and I introduced her to a uh, producer that worked there. Apparently, she just straight walk, walked up to him and said, like, hey, I want to propose to this guy. Like, can we put that in the game? And uh, Bungie did that. <laughs> they made like a ring, they make like a kneeling emote, they made like everything, and then one day when we were playing, she just Jeez. proposed through the video game. Wow. I think I That's saw that amazing. on Twitter. Yeah, it was incredible. It, yeah. it, it's kind of a shock when you go to the postmaster and realize that, oh shit, I'm engaged now. <laughs> uh, but it was also kind of fascinating because like after that I was just worried who else is gonna figure out that this is how you reach me. Like, you know, like my <laughs> my tax my taxes come in through the postmaster and destiny and stuff like that. So I was a little worried for a while, like, oh shit. The door is open. This is gonna this is gonna work. That um that's very funny because when I played Destiny One, I loved the proposing emote and I would use it all the time on my friend Casey Malone, who I would play <laughs> Destiny with, um, and he hated it. Nice. Um, but I did it all the time, and I she, can't wait for them to put in Destiny Two. So she uh, that was specifically made for her character, and she would use it all the time when I would like let her wipe in a raid because you know like sometimes you have to sacrifice some characters to like survive in a battle. Right. And I once had her on the other side of like a transparent door, <laughs> and like the, in, the inner room in that section gets destroyed in a giant explosion. <laughs> but you can lock off specific parts of the level to be safe by shooting a thing, and then the door closes, and then you get to watch everybody on the other side die. <laughs> so like you need to like four to survive. So if you're too late, you all wipe, and you have to do right. the entire encounter again. It's like a 20 minute fight, so you right. don't want to do that. So I. I'm usually the raid lead, so I, 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 slide, I did like a slide into the room, turned around, like counted how many people were in there. There were four, <laughs> so I shot the door, it closed, and then she was on the other side, and she just did like this kneeling proposal. <laughs> so she was on one knee as like the explosion came rolling in and just killed her. I was like, you can't do that. That's like, can we, whatever is fine, but this is not okay. Just the modern thumbs up as you go into the lava. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's, that's so good. That's fantastic. Um, but I guess moving on, uh, we have, I kind of talked, or got some info from y'all previously. Um, I guess we'll, we'll all just go down the list, we'll see how it goes, and talking about parents in video games. I think parents, there can be a wildly different relationship uh, depending on well, everything. But with video games included, it's either you're talking to a brick wall, trying to explain the thing you like, or their way into like a certain like my friend's mom would destroy him at civilization. Like they seem to they can find their one game that they'll destroy you at, or they won't know anything about it at all. Um, but I have a few people checked off with parents and video games. Is there anyone that would like to jump in? Sure. Uh, I'm a Twitch streamer. I play video games for a living. My parents slowly started understanding it. I did a baking stream with them last Christmas, and at Ooh. first they didn't get it and they were kind of nervous and shy and then people in chat would be like hey well like parents tell us about your lives and then I actually had to go sit down because both of them were just like right in front of the camera being like let me tell you this story from my first job like as an archaeologist and wherever and people are like oh did you mean and they like talked at my chat for like two hours or something and ever since then they've been like on Christmas okay on Christmas day I was at my parents' house, and my mom comes by and hands me my laptop that I brought to like watch Netflix, and she's like, you should stream today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's, it's Christmas. And she's like, yeah, but you should hang out with chat. They probably want to see you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like I can't play games. She's like, I don't know, show them what you got for Christmas. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so I did. And then my mom shows up, and she's like, hi, chat. <laughs> and it was like so pure and cute. But So they get it now after that kind of thing <laughs> but they recently went on like a big family holiday with like all the sisters and brothers and stuff uh, to Europe and that's when I realized people have no idea what streaming is and how mm. big video games can be and how they can be a career because they spent two weeks in Italy trying to explain what streaming is <laughs> and how video games are a viable career and how both their kids are streamers and they're like well they it's like YouTube, but it's live. They play games, and it, two weeks later, nobody got it. <laughs> but the parents were trying so hard, and they're so supportive now. Aww. But it took a really long time. Man. Like, why are these creeps online paying you money to play video games? <laughs> I got like a really big tip on one of my streams in like the first year, and my dad just goes, please tell me you had your shirt on. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's Aww. against the terms of service of the website. Yes, dad. 
And he so goes, I had okay. To. Yeah. But no, he, they're, they get it now, I think. It took That's a long good. time. That's awesome. Uh, my gra- it's funny. So I was raised by my grandma. I wasn't raised by my actual parents because they were uh, drug addicted. So my, gra- my grandma took me uh, and raised me since I was born. Uh, and I was raised in the Bronx in the 70s, late 70s, uh, early 80s. Um, and it was not a great time in New York back in the day, back in the, in the late 70s and 80s. It was like full on uh, crack epidemic and, and crime was pretty, it was pretty rampant. Um, but it was also kind of cool because they had like the, the, the folks who would get on the train and they'd have like berets and they were hanging out with the Guardian Angels. That's a super old reference. I'm sorry. I'm really old. I apologize. No, don't um, apologize for being old. Apologize for You're living. You're not old, I mean. <laughs> my body still works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but video games for me, in terms of my parents, was my grandma kind of used video games as a way to keep me safe. Um, so it was like a way to like, no, you can't go run the streets and go hang out with the guardian angels. I was like, but they're cool. They have red jackets. That's dope. And they have nunchucks. So what's up with that? Why can't I hang out with them? She's like, no, you have to stay home. And here's an Atari. Or, and here's an NES. Uh, so you can keep your behind in the house and not run around and, and do crimes in the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit of like Final Fight, but it was not that bad. <laughs> no, 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 no garbage chickens. Wow. But it was good enough. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Rami, I've been yeah, following I, a little I, bit of your thread on Twitter. I have one. Um, oh, this is so cute. My, um, my, my mom and dad, they, um, they're, um, I actually have two stories. I'll start, I'll start, start with the shorter one. Um, my mom and dad are from different countries. My dad's Egyptian. My mom is, is from the Netherlands. Um, that means they, they raised me in very different ways, in a way. My dad is very much, you have four options in, in careers. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or a disgrace to the family. Uh, and my mom is very much Dutch, so it's a, it's a socialist country. Your school gets paid for, so you, you just do whatever the hell you want, and that's fine, uh, as long as you're happy, right? So I was raised like very differently by these two parents, and they also treated uh, games very differently. Uh, when I told my dad when I was a kid that I really wanted a PlayStation, uh, being Egyptian, he didn't believe in paying that much money for technology. He goes, like, why would you pay that much money for a box that puts images on the screen? I'll just go to the black market and get one for cheap. <laughs> and so he bought me a thing called a police station. <laughs> and it's effectively an NES that was modded to look like a PlayStation. Oh. And I had spent like all of my birthday money on getting a PlayStation game. And then when I opened the PlayStation and hadn't realized that it wasn't a PlayStation, it had a cartridge slot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the most soul crushing, like, this, 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 this was all my birthday money. And they don't do game returns. And I have an NES now. And then I realized, but I have an NES now. They had 99 games on it, uh, pre installed, but they were actually nine games. And then those nine games were repeated 11 times with different Perfect. titles. <laughs> <laughs> and they would be like minor hacks of the game. So it would be like Super Luigi World, and player one would be Luigi, and player two would be Mario, and that was the full thing. <laughs> would, it's completely different. Yeah, you would yeah. start in like World 3, and like the water level would be red instead of blue, and it would be like Super Lava Brothers Jeez. or something. And, uh, that was really good. My dad never saw what was wrong with that story, and he still <laughs> thinks he made me the better choice. Um, eventually, I went to, to school for game design, and uh, I, uh, I started a company with a guy I didn't like, still doing that. We turned eight yesterday. And um, then um, and then I went to, uh, I started traveling. I started traveling around the world. I travel all the time. I'm usually never in a country for more than five days. And I work with local game developers to like, in countries where the games industry isn't that big to like support them, find like a way to be a creative industry, connect them with the industry that we have here in the US because we have a lot of, of, of privilege in the Western world in that yep. you know we speak English, like if we wanna like talk to press, they're usually kinda nearby, we can afford going to events. I wanna make sure that everybody around the world has those opportunities and can make games. So every now and then I would go home and go talk to my mom and one day uh, I said, that, yeah, I was visiting Phil in Chicago and she goes, oh, which Phil? Like the, the Tibetoski. She's like, how's After That doing? I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've never told you about Phil Tibetoski and After That. <laughs> How do you know this? And she's like, I sometimes read up on games news to know what's happening in your life. Oh. I'm like, aww. <laughs> so I started just like poking. I'm like, okay, well, let's see how much you know. And she knew everything. Jeez. She knew like Phil Spencer, she knew Yoshida, she knew like Nintendo, PlayStation, Microsoft, she knew any developers. She could tell the difference between Phil Fish, Phil Spencer, Phil Tibetoski. <laughs> <laughs> um, she knew all of that. I'm like, have you ever played a game? She's like, no. Like, well, we're going to fix that. 
So I bought her Xbox. I brought my, my old Xbox, and I bought her a copy of Final Fantasy XV because she really likes these like big, epic, good versus evil fantasy stories, and it didn't seem too violent. Yeah. And I started like teaching her video games, and I gave her the controller, and I, I made a rule, I will never touch this controller, and I started live tweeting like as she went through this, and uh, the hashtag was mom VSFFXV, <laughs> and uh, it, is, it is the purest thing, because I think when, for a lot of us, when we go into games, we start young, so we don't have much of a, an established idea of the world at that point, so we kind of accept video, games world, video game worlds as they are, uh, well, for my mom, she comes with like 60 plus years of life experience and then goes into a game. Right. So when, when um, in Final Fantasy XV you play like the crown prince and your kingdom is in like in distress and you, you go on this trip to like try and, try and fix it. And uh, one of the first things you do is you meet this mechanic that fixes your car. And then the mechanic as like an opening quest goes like, oh, by the way, this is like the tutorial for how you use the car. She goes like, oh, by the way, can you bring this, this box over to the next settlement? It's on your route. Like it'll be, it'll be fine. You just have to like, here's how you do it. My mom just kind of looked at him and went like, no, hell no, I'm a crown prince. Like, I'm not going to do your delivery. <laughs> <laughs> like, that makes a lot of sense. But also, or, or, or a little bit later, um, you meet like the antagonist of the game uh, or like secret protagonist. You never quite know. It's like one of those weird, ambiguous characters named Arden. Black hat, like slightly diagonal, long purple hair, uh, long black coat, always like looks at you like this. This introduces a suspicious stranger. The music goes like dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 with like a weird discordant <laughs> note at the end. So everything in it is like the Japanese like trope of like, you don't quite know whether this character is going to be on your side or on the other side, right? Like that's the, the entire point of that character is to be kind of ambiguous. Even the text says like suspicious stranger. So I was really excited because my mom has no idea about any of these tropes. Right? She has no idea what that character means. So I'm just excited like what happens when she meets this character. So one day she texts me and she's like, oh, I got to a new place. I'm like, oh, cool. She's like, yeah, Golden Key. I'm like, okay. She's like, it was a very long walk. I'm like, why did you walk? You, you have a car. She's like, I couldn't find it. I'm like, there's a mini map. You can fast travel. She's like, yeah, I read about fast travel, but nobody told me why I would use it or how I would use it. So I guess I just walked. I'm like, that's a 35 minute walk or something. She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Uh, did anything happen at Golden Key? She's like, yeah, I met this, I met this shady guy. I'm like, oh, okay. Tell, do tell. Like, yeah, he was wearing like all black. I'm like, okay. She's like, uh, yeah, and he, he was kind of like, I walked up to him. I'm like, mm-hmm. She's like, and uh, yeah, I, t I talked to him. I'm like, okay. What was, what was suspicious? He's like, well, he tried to sell me guns. I'm like, <laughs> 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 so it turns out I started up the game and I walked over and it turns out there's a shopkeeper right there. <laughs> And she had walked to the shopkeeper, and the shopkeeper had been like, hey, you want to buy some weapons? And her mom was like, hell no. <laughs> I'm like, we should, if I ran into something on the, somebody on the street, they'd go like, hey, guns. I'd be like, no, nah, going that way. And that's exactly what my mom did. Wow, that's funny. So she's been playing games now for a while. She played uh, Final Fantasy. She's played Dragon Age Inquisition. Nice. Uh, she didn't romance anybody. She doesn't have time for that shit. She had a word to say. <laughs> uh, she played Persona 5, which she thought was incredible. Uh, she thought the art style was amazing. That's when she learned that you can walk towards the camera and there's world there. Because uh -huh. she would always turn the camera. Uh, uh -huh. At first she couldn't do dual sticks. She had to like move and then rotate and then move. She, she's kind of got that now. And uh, she recently finished, uh, not even kidding, she recently finished God of War. <laughs> That's quite uh, the leap. And I had kind of forgotten that that is probably a pretty impactful game for a parent. Mm. I was just like, oh, this would be, this would be, like, it's a, it's a third person <laughs> action game. It has like a cool, like, archaeo, like, a uh, cool, like, historical sort of context, mythology. My mom loves all that stuff. And I'm just watching my mom, like, decapitate ice trolls and just be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, I've turned, this is like, this has gone full gamer now. Like, <laughs> so uh, she really wants to play Nier Automata because she's read about it and everybody seems very excited about it. Yeah. Uh, she's currently playing Ratchet and Clank, but she keeps calling it Clan and Clutch because she just forgets the characters of the name's <laughs> characters. And, um, and she really wants to play Destiny 2 uh, because that game was very important to me yeah. and remains very important to me. So she's, she's, she's being a gamer. The jump to first person shooter is an interesting one, but I look forward to that Me too. Thread. I'm really excited to her figuring out that if you move the stick up, eventually it just stops, right? Because that's how code works. It's really hard to make the camera keep going. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really excited for her to like start spinning around, looking up like <laughs> like I would do when I was a kid. Wow, that's amazing, uh, Abby. Yes. I don't know much, but I do know you like The Sims. 
I do. I love The Sims. I would love to talk about The Sims. Anyone else wants to join in, that's fine. But I would love to talk about The Sims. Great. How much of The Sims have you played? Where did you start? Oh, man. I mean, I've played a lot of The Sims. So I definitely started... Um, I started playing The Sims, like, on my dad's computer. So we had just, like, the main base game Sims. We really didn't have a lot of expansions growing up. Like, I remember I'd go to friends' houses who would have all the expansions, and they would be off, like, playing outside, and I'd be like... <laughs> I'm going to play these Sims. Y'all Sims have magic. <laughs> We're going to buckle up on this. Um, but I also, I remember playing Sims Tower with my sister when I was like right. far too young to really understand it. And she probably was too, but I definitely enjoyed watching her play it. I wish they made more of those kind of Sims Tower games. I realize there are probably like a ton of indie ones that kind of branch out of the sort of Maxis Sims universe. But I loved Sims Tower. I love the SimCity games. Those are games that I'm never particularly very good at, but do greatly enjoy. I think there's something so satisfying about kind of like building a world from nothing. Yeah. Um, and then also just like my little dollhouse of The Sims. It's always very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I played the hell out of The Sims. My grandpa always had the most advanced computer in our family. And so he had The Sims, and that's the first place I played it. And then right after playing it like the one time, not really, I feel like I was too young to understand the whole breadth of what it was trying to do, but just like, here's a house I can design, and my dude runs around, I give him stupid hair, because that's all they had mm -hmm. in The Sims 1. So then, like, I was at school drawing houses in my notebook, and, like, showing my brother, and be like, I want to do this, and, like, do they have, like, garbage cans that go under the counter? I don't know. I guess I'll figure it out next time I go to Grandpa's. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I ever actually went back, but... I think one of the things I also really loved about The Sims was growing up, um, we always had like Mac computers. Um, so it was one of the few games I could right. play pretty consistently. They would always have them, or at least have them eventually. Um, I also played a lot of Glider on our Mac. It's one of my Glider? favorite games. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's Mac only. It's this free to download game. They probably still have it somewhere, but you're just playing as this paper airplane. So you're like, uh, it's like a side scroller. You're going through like, uh, like a, a grocery store and you're flying through and you have to like go up and down these vents oh. to get height. And then you can like get caught in fly traps or get like <laughs> zapped in like an electric socket. It's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> a new classic. I love it. Um, did you ever play The Sims online? I don't think many people did. I, I played the hell out of The Sims Online. I don't think so. I think I probably played some kind of like Facebook version for right. like a week. Like I feel like they always have those Facebook games that I play for like four days religiously and then never touch again. <laughs> um, but I think that's probably it for my Sims Online stuff. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I guess next on the list, you kind of mentioned it, but we'll go into it with siblings. Hmm. Uh, I have four older brothers, so we had games like... We were able to get systems here and there, and then somehow they disappear. So even though we had the NES, the SNES, a Sega, a PlayStation, a PlayStation 2, they all disappeared or were destroyed over the years. So it's good stuff. That's what I remember about my siblings. <laughs> Anyone else have any stories in relation to games? Yeah, so my brother is also a streamer, big gamer. Um, he, My parents would never buy us a console. It was like, you have to save up and buy it yourself. So he was like six or seven years older, so he was the one saving up his allowance, and he would buy them and then not let me play it. Um, <laughs> but I got to watch him play the video games, and that was really fun. But then I started going like to um, like after school daycare in like primary school or like elementary school, and I don't like people. And I don't like talking to people um, or being around people, really. Uh, and so at this daycare, which was in this, like, woman's basement sort of thing, um, <clears throat> all the kids would go and, like, do arts and crafts and, like, go play with each other. And I found her son's Super Nintendo uh, that we were not supposed to touch. And then I just was the quiet, weird kid. So she was like... <laughs> fine and she let me play it and after school daycare I would that's what I would do and that's kind of where my like love of video games started um because I was never allowed to play the controller at my I like at home I was allowed to watch and sometimes play but it was his console in his room yeah it wasn't like in the living room so I didn't really have like a lot of at home time so I was like after school daycare hell yeah Let's go play video games. <laughs> yes, that, that's fair. My brother had his PlayStation 2 in his room in the basement, and then Max, Max Payne came out, and I had heard all about it, and I think I saw a little bit that he always kicked me out of his room, and then, like, he wasn't home, so I'd sneak downstairs and, like, play it and look at that dumb face. Be like, it does look like that. And then dive around and run away if I heard any noise upstairs, but it was good stuff. Like, to be fair, if I was him and my, like, seven 
your younger sister wanted to play video games, I'd probably be like, get the fuck out. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I get it. I'm, I'm, oh, hey. Hi. Back. Sorry, I turned it off. I'm, uh, I'm the oldest brother in, uh, in the family, so for me it was kind of a, an opposite story. I always was the one that had the games. <laughs> Uh, I was always also the one that had the best reading comprehension because I was two years ahead and we didn't. None of us spoke English. I'm, I'm Dutch, so right. English was not a thing uh, until I was like eight or nine or something. Um, so I would always, <laughs> me and my brother, uh, my younger brother, we would always play games together. Um, I would learn a game and then like try to figure it out and understand it, and then I would teach him, and then he would get better, and then I would stop playing a game <laughs> because then it was no fun anymore. Of course. Uh, that kind of like defines my childhood gaming <laughs> history. It's just like I would play a game, Transport Tycoon, play the game until he figured out he could like block my railroad after I built like a twenty hundred, like a two hundred thousand dollar tunnel. He could just put like one piece of rail in front of it, and then I couldn't continue building. <laughs> so then I would have to demolish it, which would cost extra money because demolishing tunnels cost more money. And then I would lose the game, and he would win. So I stopped playing Transport Tycoon, and then I. I decided, well, you know what, I'll play something else. How about StarCraft? So I taught, I taught him StarCraft, and then three weeks later, I was building like a little Terran base, and at that point, he dropped in some Protoss Reavers, which are like at the end of the tech tree, and I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I'm done with StarCraft. So for like, I think for like decades of my life, I have this thing where I teach my brother a game, and then in three weeks, he's better, and then I play something else. And that's, this is how I have such an eclectic gaming history. It's just because my brother keeps beating me and stuff. Makes sense. That's great. <laughs> Uh, we'll I have on. some sibling you, you, stories. You do? Yes. Perfect. That'd be great. Um, so I played a lot of games with my sister growing up. Uh, like, I remember we would have long summers, because my folks are divorced, so we'd, like, stay at my mom's house during the summer sometimes, or my dad's house, but a lot of summers at my mom's house where we didn't have, like, our main consoles, uh, but we did have, like, our N64 and, like, this old-ass PC computer, so we would, I remember we would go into the PC computer, which is in this, like, attic loft that was, like, very hot and no air, not, like, no air conditioning at all, and we just played Nancy Drew games all day, because it was, like, <laughs> you could play those games on, like, a fucking toothpick, like, they require <laughs> nothing. Like, they're, they're so non-impactful. But uh, we would just play those all day long, and it was so fun. And then I remember we would also play our N64. And this was, like, long after it was in fashion, so we never got new games for it. So we just had uh, Perfect Dark and uh, Mario Party 2. Uh, so we played a lot of both of those. Uh, I remember we were going through and trying to complete all of, like, the like challenge levels because it was like that big tree stump that you like kind of ride this train up to to like in Mario Party 2 to like do each mini game and we tried to do it on hard and we never did. <laughs> <laughs> this is like years of summers and we never beat it. <laughs> but I still have a lot of good memories of those games. Yeah. More of an indoor kid then. Yeah, I mean, we do outdoor stuff, too. Oh, yeah. But, you know, how much outdoor stuff you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much. Exactly. There's, there's millions of Mario Party minigames. Right, totally. There's only so many things you can do outside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess the next category here, with my great transitions, <laughs> is childhood friends. Um, I feel oh. like I told most of my stories, but Khalif, do you have anything that pops into head, in your head? So, my best friend, who lived next door to me, we would ride bikes in our backyard, but we couldn't move that much because there was like a set of stairs right in the middle of the yard. <laughs> so you'd like go around the stairs and it was like a pillar right here. So you'd have to like weave in between those places. So we would do that. And then one, once we got tired of that, he had an NES and we'd go hang out in his basement and he had Gyromite with the actual Rob robot. Oh. And I was, <laughs> first I was like amazed because I was like, I'd not seen one of those in real life. And I was like, I see them on TV and I see those in, <laughs> You know, the stores, and I've never seen one. And we sat there for hours trying to figure out ways to get the stupid gyroscopes to actually work on the damn robot. And it <laughs> never worked. Oh, no. It never worked because it was super janky because it was like one arm would kind of go up and the other one kind of not go up. And you would try to figure out how to balance the stuff out. And then one day we almost got it to work. And he had to go to some outside, outside shit. He had to go do outside stuff with nature and shit. And I was like, what are you doing? We're, supposed to, we're like this close to getting this stupid thing to work that we tried to get for a month. And you're going to go to Little League? What the fuck is this? <laughs> we're like embarking on a new journey in, in the world. And you're going to go play baseball. This is whack. 
So we stopped talking to each other for like a week. <laughs> we stopped talking to each other for like a week because I was I was salty. I was like, yo, we almost got this dumb thing to balance and like almost play a game and you went to go do real life shit. I'm like, what is this? He yeah. ruined it. Yeah, he sucked. I didn't like him after that for a bit. <laughs> we were super salty. Yeah. Wow, that is... I've never seen a robot, Rob the Robot in real life. And to think of someone having it as a kid, I only think of it now as like adults buy it because it's a nostalgia piece. I can't imagine a child having it ever. I don't think I don't think his like, parents knew what it was, because there were those stories. He was like, when your parents buy you things and they really don't know, it's like that that story of like, I think I'm getting you this. Like that was my version of what do you call it? Like that was my version of getting. Um, uh, I have two really old uh, consoles that people don't really remember, except for Mike Micah, who knows that stuff. So I had a Bally Astrocade. Yep, exactly. That <laughs> face. And I also had a Vextrex. See like that face? That, but I don't nope. Know. <laughs> See, and those things, there's like no one remembers those things. It's like my, my, panel, my games had wood paneling on it. <laughs> that's how old they were. But anyway, that's another story. Yep. Put them in the back of your station wagon. Yeah. Good to go. Mm hmm. What do we got here? I don't know why. This category just says teen stuff. Teen stuff? Teen stuff. Teen, teen stuff. stuff. <laughs> well, it's easier than childhood friends because I don't think I had many. I'm just trying to think, and I'm just like, nope. Yeah, I didn't no, have any either. There. Yeah, I did. Just void, just blank. <laughs> I would play with neighbors primarily, like my friend Lauren. I was going to say her full name, but I'm not going to do that. Um, she was my neighbor, and I remember I'd always go, and we would play her brother's GameCube and just play Mario Kart Double Dash. Ooh. And she would always want to be in the back just doing the items, which was perfect for me because I did not want to share driving. <laughs> uh, and I played so much of that game and got pretty good at it and like literally never owned it myself. Um, and I remember she would always come over and play. And I would play this with my sister as well. We had this game. Uh, I wish I could find, like, a good port of it. I don't think there ever will be. But I loved this game. It was this um, American Girl doll game where you put on, <laughs> like, little plays. So you could, like, it was, like, type-to-speak type stuff. So we would just make them what? say this insane shit in this, like, play where it's, like, oh, these, like, like Native American, like, American Girl doll and, like, a colonial doll and, like, all of this stuff just being, like, fart, fart, fart. <laughs> uh, and we had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> you should that find is, that, and then you should I know. stream that. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah, love yeah. to. I, I would watch me. that. <laughs> I'm going to have to write that one down. It sounds like good stuff. Sounds like good content. Yeah. Man, you guys are lucky neighbors. I had someone, like, the vaguest memories of some kid in the block area, probably like a five-minute walk, and I would just go to his house to play the Ness, and then his dad was a smoker, so whenever he made hamburgers, they were just salt. That's all I remember <laughs> of this kid in his house is just like, here's your burger. And they're like, why is it so salty? And I asked my mom later, and it's like, he smokes, so he can't taste anything. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't say it like that. I'm putting a bunch of editorial on it, but that's, that's I so all want I that to be the explanation so bad. <laughs> he has all. no taste buds. He's burned them all off. <laughs> Never smoke those devil sticks. <laughs> and then four of my brothers smoked, or three of my brothers smoked, so nah. she had to try and stop it with me. Uh, <laughs> That's all I remember for neighborhood kids, though. Just the salty burgers. Yeah, just the salty, <laughs> salty burgers. High sodium children. <laughs> I, I was I was a programming kid, so everybody yeah. was like, "Yeah, I'm not hanging out with you. It's just not happening. <laughs> I have a reputation, and you're not good for it." So that was that was my childhood. Was like, nah. So I played video games with my brother, and then he beat me at them. It was, it was actually quite disappointing now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, it made you who you are today. That's uh, the whole point. Yeah. yeah. I actually just remembered something going Perfect. back from teen years to like childhood. Um, I've mentioned this a little bit this weekend because relevance, but our family was like the first one to have like a desktop computer like on the mm. block when the internet came out. Ooh. We were fancy. Um, <laughs> and my parents bought You Don't Know Jack. Like the original, you don't know Jack for right. Mac, and I remember playing that with the entire family. We turned like my old nursery, which was like a five foot by four foot room, into like the computer room, and the four of us would huddle in there and like play you don't know Jack against each other. But I was like I don't know, six or seven, so I <laughs> literally didn't know shit, um, and I lost all the time. But I remember that so vividly. So when it came out for like Xbox many years ago, um, and you know, Jackbox started coming back in with games and stuff, I was really excited. I was like, oh, yeah, this is from my childhood. And then it was just like announced the other day that I'm doing a voice in the new hmm. You Don't Know Jack game, yes. which is really cool for me. That's it's awesome. a really small part, but 
I remember like when they messaged me about it, like near in tears, being so excited because of childhood Kate wanting to be so good at that game and sucking so bad. <laughs> and so I've never won, but I'm in it. Awesome. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. That makes you the real winner, honestly. Exactly. One, one thing that's that's interesting to me with, with listening to stories on, on panels like this is, is that I always forget how big the gap between Europe and America actually is, or North mm. America. Because like all of the games that were listed just now, like Nan Nancy something, and it's like true. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I have no idea what any of those things are. We had a game called Red Cat, which was an educational game about a cowboy cat. Uh, that <laughs> that would, sounds dope. No, it was super. It was super cool. Uh, I thought. Uh, now I played one recently, and it's actually offensive in every possible way. <laughs> um, the cat is But a it racist. was made for like six to eight year olds, and it would like introduce like. Uh, language, uh, geography, like the geography of the Netherlands, stuff like that. They were Dutch games. And I just, I, I recently played one again. It was called the Red Cat and the Spannende Stedentocht, which is like Red Cat and the Exciting City Trip. And it starts with the premise of these, these two characters, Brutus and Max, which are like a bulldog and like a rat. And they kidnap the queen of the Netherlands. Cool. Um, and then they, they show the map of where she is and then rip it up and like, shatter all those pieces over the Netherlands, and that's the start of your adventure. And I booted it up, and I, I vaguely remember that, but what I did not, what I was not ready for was like, the opening shot is literally a shot of the queen with like this dog with a giant gun waving around. <laughs> I like a rat. And I was like, how the hell did this ever get published? It's, it's just our queen, like the actual queen of the country, just like being threatened with a gun. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Huh, childhood was weird. <laughs> See, that sounds like a North American game. Yeah. It also sounds like something that should have Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> I mean, I would not be surprised if that was actually in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, if you ever want to play a game, you really if you want that childhood wonder of not understanding what, what a game is, but you still want to laugh at it a bit, Rat God is a, it's, it's a recommendation. <laughs> Perfect. Something else going back to childhood that reminded me of... Kate being alone in the room. I don't remember what the what the event was, but I was at like a school gymnasium for someone's party, and they but they had like the TV on the little cart that they use for school yeah. rolled out, mm. and they had a PlayStation One on it. And all I remember is seeing the end of Metal Gear Solid. Someone beat Metal Gear Solid at this party. I think it was, the save was somewhere near, but that's where I first saw the end of the first uh, Metal Gear Solid. I swear, I feel like I'm conflating memories, but I swear I saw someone do. The Knights of the Round summon from Final Fantasy VII. I might have just imagined that, but I feel like someone just doing someone was just banging through the greatest hits of PlayStation on this TV just to show off at this party, and it's the greatest memory I probably dreamed up. But it was fantastic. Wait, so you you were imagining the ending of Metal Gear Solid while there was a Knights of the Round table summon? <laughs> I think like, it was just like, Metal Gear Rex just gets wrecked by like these swords coming through. <laughs> like, cause I would play the hell out of that. Like I'm up for this. That would be dope. This is the perfect game. The two greatest games <laughs> yeah. put together. I won that. <laughs> well, Announce that's all it, I remember. And then IGN will come by. And then IGN will come by. <laughs> oh, no. Publish Oops. it now, Vlambeer. <sighs> you know how many like emails I've gotten during this battle? Like, my phone keeps buzzing. Just it's like, sure. interview just about the new. I'm like, oh, God. Just put the phone away. We're here to just relax. It's terrifying. <laughs> so scary. This is your hour away from that. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to do it on an independent podcast, you can tell. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to plugs later. No worries. But I did uh, move to the next slide where I found out you can put 3D objects in the new PowerPoint. So Hell I found yeah. a horse and a car and <laughs> oh, a dinosaur. Good choice. Snap. Yes. And you can spin those around any which way. Rat Hell cat yeah. seagull. This is the greatest slide now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> it, like, it feels like there's so much narrative like potential here. I thought that it had that to has to be like the ending of a Reading Rainbow episode. Yeah. yeah. It's like I all three of those things combined. All modes of transportation. I, I saw, saw the, the car, car and I was like, oh, because of video games. And then I saw the dinosaur and I was like, oh, video games. And then you pointed out the horse and it's the first time I've seen it, <laughs> even though I've been reading the names. It just... Oh. I, wasn't visible to me until now. I, I saw like the horse and was like, oh, I don't need to look at anything else. I also That's kind of outside. I'm just like, how is the horse? Like, because I started with like, oh yeah, there's a car, but we're looking at it from beneath, so I guess it's jumping. Yeah. But then also there's like a yeah. flying horse, <laughs> and then there's like a meteor strike dinosaur. So I'm, I'm, I just believe that the dinosaur is like summoning these like. Dun, dun, oh dun, shit! Dun, dun, oh wow! Oh, stop playing. Three D yeah. PowerPoint got here's good. The thing, Here's the thing. It's, it, it's got a dumber <laughs> as well. When you, ha when you had it the other way, it looked like the dinosaur was laughing. And this then the, the horse was like, you talking shit? 
<laughs> he like looked around. Yeah. His, looked around. His, his, huh? his this is that like, good, good playing. content. Yeah. That people yeah. This is it. <laughs> this is it. The Twitch chat is like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> I would love to see Twitch chat right now. They're like, what? I'm gonna make him kiss. Make him kiss. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, and then, no, 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 no. And then Levar Burns like, bit it, bit. And then how the, the <laughs> no, that's wrong. This is not good. This is not how kissing works. This is a butterfly. <laughs> they're in doing the sky. like a French cheek yeah, kiss. Cheek yeah. to cheek. It's very Aww. European. Make the car kiss. I'm European, <laughs> and I can guarantee you that's not. It's not very. It's European. <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Man, this really went off the rails. Oh, that was great. I was very excited for these 3D models, but I'm not going to add any more. I'm just going to do this, put this back over. Oh, no. Nobody needs my... No, leave it. My Twitter okay. handle is not that important okay. compared That's to this dinosaur. Mine is, though, so move right. the... Di- yeah. Right. That's kind of great. This, di- this dinosaur is what we need. Perfect. <laughs> Did anybody ever play a good game with dinosaurs? The Cadillacs new, and dinosaurs. The new Jurassic World game was pretty good. Um, I, didn't Putt Putt have one where he goes to, back in time to dinosaurs? I don't. I have no idea Putt-Putt. what. A Putt-Putt That's Putt-Putt another was. educational game. Oh, okay. It's great. It's this little car, this little convertible car you drive around, and there's one he goes like travels through time, and I think that's probably the dinosaur one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so yep. My I, just, I just remember one day we did a pitch to Cartoon Network and we said, we will make the first ever good game with dinosaurs. And they took the pitch. They were like, yeah, we'll pay you money for this. And we're wow. like, uh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, was that actually true? Or like, now that I'm looking at this dinosaur, I'm like, maybe we bluffed that one. Maybe there was a good game with dinosaurs. Our game was not good. Okay. Well, well, like, we, good. We, we messed it up. We tried. Oh, but no. it, uh, it's, it turns out it's hard. Yeah, it's elusive. Primal Rage is like a fantastic dinosaur game. Mm. Oh, yeah. That was the one. Turok. Is yeah, that a game? Turok. Like, it's a game. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn kind of has dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. yeah it doesn't, right. but Metal it does. dinosaurs. Robot dinosaurs. Yeah. Metal. Dino Ooh, Crisis. Ooh, Dino Crisis is on point. Shout I don't out. remember. Shout out. I've never played familiar. Dino Crisis. <laughs> if, it, if it's good, I clearly haven't played it. Yeah, yeah Dino Crisis was on point. Is, are they like yeah. zombie dinos? Dino Park? Is that like a... Okay. We, uh, we did. We cool. did a game. And now we're shutting down the audience. <laughs> <interaction>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank you for your participation <laughs> you. in this impromptu Q and A. But carrying on is Truck the game with the brain gun. <laughs> This okay. is not how you carry on. No. This is, <laughs> that was the question. That was my next question. It's on my. It's on my list. Oh, no, is, Truck. <laughs> is Truck the game with the brain gun? I'm I'm pretty sure that game freaked me out when I was a kid. I never played Truck. I missed no, that. No. No one. No one I, on this panel? Okay, good. Then there's no answer for it. No one here knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Let's ask the audience! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're building a relationship with the audience. Oh, boy. Uh, next. I don't, did we ever get to teen stuff? Anyone yeah, got any? It didn't hot? exist. I played uh, <laughs> Animal Crossing a bunch with my friend Sarah yes. as a teen. That was like high school. Because she, she was like, well, she had a much older sister, so she was sort of like an only child in the sense of like, oh, they go on family vacations. And I so, know some families will like invite a friend, and like I would often be that friend. Awesome. Uh, so we would just play a whole lot of Animal Crossing, New Leaf in the car. <laughs> uh, it was the best. Nice. Yeah. But, yeah. Teen Years was, was really good for arcade stuff. Right. That was that was when I got into the arcade scene, and I was. You great. are you are older. I'm old. <laughs> sure. Hey, hey, hey. The time I was a teenager, arcade was dead. We like, had it was so dead. <laughs> Back in the day when wood paneling was a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> so we actually like that was my that was my human interaction with people was like to go to the arcade and like put your quarter up and do all that stuff. And it was interesting to see all the dynamics that was in that one in those rooms alone because it was like little microcosms of just like the outside world and like how people dealt with other people. So it was like me as a younger cat getting in there, and then all the older all the older folks who were like especially into all the fighting game scene. And that was when I was starting to get into Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and all that stuff. And just the looks that you would get when you were not tall enough to like <laughs> do stuff, or when you rolled in there with like your cheat sheet of of fatalities oh. and you were like. People would just like look at you and shame you. <laughs> They'd give you the look like you just brought in a piece of paper into this establishment, into this holy space, and you just are now gonna cheat. I was like, yes. Do you not know how many quarters it takes to beat you? <laughs> I don't have money. This is given to me. This was a gift. I don't have time to fuck with y'all. I need to get in here and win. Um, yeah, so like the arcade scene in my home in my teen years was like a huge part of my growing up into the gaming space and like having reverence for like all the actual hardware stuff that it takes to make a game, make a game in those spaces. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I didn't even think of 
the actual like people go to an, or people went to an arcade. I guess there's still some people went to an arcade and there'd be like other people there. So it would make that environment that is different and like you'd have your different sections of people and it would change depending on the time of day or like who was there could change the whole environment. And also like most of those arcades were like in the back of pool halls. Right. So that was like a really <laughs> weird space too because you'd like have a whole bunch of like adult adults and then you'd have you know kids kind of rolling after school and like going and play stuff. And then it was just a weird dynamic because it's like people who are over there like, you know, doing mob bets and all this other stuff. And then you're kind of like coming in the back. Like, I just want to play like turbo, dude. Like, I just want to get on the sticks and like do some stuff. I, the only arcade I've ever been to like proper as a, as a, as a kid was in Egypt. Mm. There, was a, there was a mall and at the bottom was an arcade. And I, I remember this one game called Panic Park. Yeah. It was a, it was a Namco arcade cabinet and it was, uh, it, it had two two sticks and they were in a rail so it didn't work like a normal arcade it was like the stick could move all the way to the left of the cabinet and the and all the way to the right but they were in the same rail and they controlled the position of a character on the screen and they were all mini games where you had to like push the those things together and I actually ended up looking for that arcade cabinet because me and my brother who played I actually injured him pretty badly once just like on my <laughs> shoulders like you know, I was gonna win this round uh, <laughs> Yeah, we that was not. Anyway, I, I tried to import it into Europe, and apparently it's banned in Europe for like danger, like physical wow. danger. And I was like, that explains a lot. Like, <laughs> how about that? Then it's even more sought after, worth even more. I I, I would love to have that game, but yeah. if me and my brother played that now, then one of us would like die. <laughs> At this point, like this is like childhood like rivalry, and <laughs> that was going to be way too much shoulder bashing, like going straight into that. It looked like you had something to say, Kate. No? Okay. Give me the... No, I, okay. I, mean, I didn't have video games in my teen years because my brother moved out and uh, then mm, all my consoles uh, went away. And so boo. I like focused at school. <laughs> boo. That's I don't know. It was about. terrible. It was wow. awful. Education. Got into university. <laughs> the game, it's not a video game, but the game my brother and I played, I don't think I told this before, as we uh, take couch cushions from the couch and hold them to our chest and then run into each other. Sick. <laughs> and then uh, one time I was smaller because he was older and I was younger. That's how that works. And then I went flying backwards and hit the top of my head on the corner of the, co of the end table. So I got a scar there. And it's great. One of many for my brothers, but oh. that was a fun game we played. <laughs> this story was like, it started so cute, and then it just like ended up with like, and now I have a scar on my head. Yeah, but <laughs> we laugh about it. Good. I still remember it, so that's good. That's a good sign. <laughs> remember that Funny time when you injured me? I, the close I've ever gotten to like being really mad at my friends was actually the first time I introduced them. I have, I have a group of three friends that I've had for like a long time in my life. One of them from like early childhood, one of them from high school, and one of them from university. Um, and uh, we play games together. We, we are currently finishing our Risk Legacy game that we started in 2013. So it's been like, because we travel all the time, so it's, right. it's hard to meet up. But the first time I was like, I, I introduced them to some indie games that I like, and I thought Spelunky would be a great choice because it's sort of like team-based. And they just <laughs> fucked around. So like they threw each other into spikes, they threw bombs at me, they were throwing rocks around that would just bounce and like trigger the shopkeeper. And, like, we never got past World 1, and I've never been so angry at anybody in my life. You know, so I mean, this is like the most brilliant, this is the most brilliant thing that has been made. And they're just like, oh, I can throw a stone. Uh, I'm, I, actually, I'm still angry. Like, I saw the, tra <laughs> I saw the trailer for Spelunky 2, and it was just like seething rage inside. I'm like, you know what? Fuck these people. This I'm the, never playing a video game with them they again. They can redeem themselves. It's the sequel they can you play. I am going to guarantee you that they will not <laughs> redeem themselves. But they must you know, respect the art. I will, give them, I will give it a go. I will give them one round. <laughs> and if not, I will never speak to them again. And now okay. I want to see you play Overcooked with them. Oh, boy. I want to see you play Overcooked. I'm, I'm headed out. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the game that breaks up all relationships. Yeah. And friendships it's... and everything. It's like, I don't want to talk to you. You don't know how to chop shit. You're just in the way. <laughs> that's the effect these games can have. That can roll into, uh, like, I play, like, I have friends that I just play games with online, and I've known them for years and years now, and there will be games that will just get to us. And we will have an argument over them, or not even over the game, of just like, we say something and then it comes out wrong, comes out a little too hot, and then it's like, no. And then we like leave Discord or whatever, and then we'll get a text like 10 minutes later being like, sorry I was so hot-headed, like, we're all good, don't worry about it. Yeah, the games, they can affect you. <laughs> <laughs> and roll <We're> credits. <laughs> <laughs> ah, moving on. I had school written down here, but only Rami checked that off. 
I don't know what that's referring to. School. School. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, yeah. No. I um, I I was officially banned from four out of the sixteen classes that I had to go to. How? Uh, because I was an asshole. You're banned from <laughs> classes? Yeah. Uh, I um, my my physics teacher would uh, put me at the other end of the class from my best friend at the time, and I decided that the only way to fix that was to just speak louder to my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so so he banned me, but I thought that was unfair because he caused the problem. Uh, so I would I would just sit next to my best friend, and the teacher would show up, go through the entire circle, like walk through the entire class, and be like, "Rami, out." And at one time, my best friend bet me that I wouldn't give the guy a hug when he said that. So I did, and I got banned. Um, <laughs> You're uh, one, one teacher, like, I was just curious if I, like, if I was in the, what is the, what is first floor? It's like the ground floor here? Mm -hmm. So second floor, one floor up. And it was a grassy field downstairs, and I wondered if I could make that jump. Because <laughs> it wasn't that high. I'm tall, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's see if that That's how that so works. So I asked my history teacher. <laughs> the, like, the, hey, taller, I... the taller you are, the shorter distances yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just like, you know what, sir, can I like, can I like jump out of the window and just see how that goes? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I, so I did. And I was permanently banned from that class. He tried you to take me to the dean and I'm like, dude, you just told me to jump out of a window. Yes. I don't know how this is going to go, but it's not going to end well for you. Uh, so I had a lot of video game playing time in school, actually, because they, they just banned me. I would just do my homework and then ace the tests oh. just as like a specific well, that's no punishment at all if he was just uh, like do the work outside some just, well, I just <laughs> couldn't go to that class but they were legally obliged to let me take the tests right like that's right. school work so I did the test and just out of spite nailed them yes you uh, which was actually <laughs> probably the best way to get me to do you well really at school stuck which is <laughs> make the teachers my enemy so it's like okay I, I will show you I can do this uh, but I spent so all. much time playing video games in school that I, I have like hundreds of memories of me just sitting outside of a classroom just playing playing like Deus Ex or Quake or whatever. Well, all my friends were like, are you f just walking into the class? And I'm like, oh my God, I hope this is a good class for you guys. This is a rough level. Like, I'm going to have a good time here. Uh, so yeah, school is like fond gaming memories. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't I, uh, use that term lightly, but that's I crazy. snuck in. I snuck in in one of the computers. I snuck in a hard drive. I uh, opened the computer and put an extra hard drive in and set it as a shared network drive. We just like Quake and StarCraft <laughs> and like bugs like that. So every class was like just every class with computers, everybody would be playing games and they, they took like a year and a half to find out how we were playing these games. Wow. I remember when the hard drive got taken out and it was like pretty much like two minutes of silence in our school. It was like, well, here goes all the fun. It was good. That is nuts. Uh, we'll move on to Khalif's question. Or not a question they brought up, but something I ask at the end of every panel. I'm um, talking about the industry and how um, I guess not. It can be how you kind of got into it through playing games, or like what are the uh, the short events that got into it, like or or um, inciting incidents or people that you might have met through games or because of games, and how you got into the industry, and we'll just and how being in the industry now has affected your relationship with games. That's the other part of that question. Oh, and we'll just go down the line. That was deep. That was a lot of, there's there's a lot a lot of layers of to that. I can, re yeah. I can reiterate as we go. No, can. no, no, it's fine. Um, I have a Rami story. I have an early Rami story. Uh, so one of the first uh, events that I ever got to cover as press was Indiecade East some years back. Um, and I'd heard about Vlambeer stuff. And I saw Rami. It was like when Rami was like first starting to get into the scene and was like starting to get some press and stuff. And I was like, oh, shit, yo, that's Rami. And he was sitting over in the corner, hanging out, doing stuff on his computer. And I went over and I was like, excuse me, Rami, in my most meek voice. <laughs> excuse me, Rami, uh, uh, I would love to uh, possibly uh, interview you, please, uh, for, my, for my blog. <laughs> that was exactly my voice at the time, too. Um, and he was like one of the most nicest folks to kind of roll up. And he was like, hey, do you want to see what Steam looks like from the back end? <laughs> and I was like, first of all, because I thought it was going to look like magic and shit. I thought it was going to be like portals. I thought it was going to look like... duct tape. Yo. I mean, really, holy shit. Yo, and I thought it was going to be like the dopest thing on the planet. I was like, it's going to have this sexy UI. It's going to look like the Minority Report. It's going to look like shit. He's going to be moving it with his hands and putting games in it like this. The reality is like you click a button and then you hope it does something. Yeah, like and it was like, you're like click Windows Explorer. Yeah. I was like, this is whack. <laughs> I was like, this totally sucks. But this is the way Steam works? Yeah, this is cool. And it was a fantastic, like, introduction into some of the parts of the industry. Of just, like, it gave me an introduction to, like, people are people. You know, you, you, you have this very uh, a fondness for folks, and you kind of 
put people in spaces where you're like, oh, you do this really cool thing I love that you do. Um, and it, it was a great uh, icebreaker for me to kind of start that first part of the process. Yeah. Um, and second story really quick is um, the way I met my co-host uh, for Small Me is um, uh, I was playing 2K, uh, I forgot which version of it, um, 2K on Twitch. And he was like, hey, I hear that you do cool stuff. And I was like, not really. And I was like, <laughs> I was like nah, I was like, that's not me. I was like, it's only because I have this game and like, like, like 500 people were watching that day. And it was like, I had gotten it really early because uh, of, shout out to the Bronx, because they just broke spree date. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to do this. I didn't know what they were like. So I did that, jumped on, and that's how I met my co-host. And we've been doing shows for like almost the past five years. Perfect. So it's like magical things through the internet. We have five minutes left. I want to get through everyone's stories and plugs. So I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to go one round of the stories and then one round of and plugs for everyone. Okay. Starting now. Uh, I don't remember the questions, uh, but I applied for a job. So I finished school uh, looking to become a film editor. That's sort of what I studied. That's what I practiced with a lot of the uh, freelance work I did while in school, while interning. And I always loved games, and I was doing comedy as well. So I found the giant bomb job when I was looking for jobs. Um, and it seemed perfect. Like it was games, it was video production, and it was comedy. So I was very excited for it. And I applied and I got it. Done? Good. You made it? <laughs> I, would, I would like to know okay. how your relationship with games has changed. I'll give you another 30 seconds. To oh, gosh. Uh, okay. Yeah. I feel like um, it's changed a bit in the sense of how I play games. You know, I play games sort of kind of thinking like, okay, what do I like? What don't I like? What's working here? What's not working? And kind of how does it relate to me in maybe like a bigger picture level? Uh, so I don't passively enjoy them kind of like I used to, which makes me sad in some ways. It's like very good in others. I get to play a wider breadth of games. I, I, I'm more inclined to check out games that I wouldn't normally see sort of if I was doing it more casually or in my free time like before. Um, that's the end of my story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Super rude now. <laughs> <laughs> have more stuff, I feel no, terrible that's it. now. Okay, <laughs> Kate, 30 seconds. I'm not going <laughs> to I made a New Year's resolution uh, in 2016 to create more. That was it. And I was like, what's the easiest one-to-one -one ratio of effort to um, feedback? And that was streaming. And so two and a half years later, it's my full-time job. I do this six or seven days a week. It is the best decision I ever made. I quit my horrible, horrible bartending job that I did for four years and became a full-time streamer, and that was the scariest thing I've ever done, but the best thing that I've ever done, and I have met so many amazing people through that. Um, I've met Mike, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give another 30 Speed seconds. Uh, stop, <laughs> cancel it. Okay, I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds to, you can finish that, and then the, how, how has streaming changed your relationship with games? I've met some of my best friends through that. Uh, I've met my partner through that. He does the same thing that I do. I've met like all of these amazing people um, and all of you people. Uh, the way the relationship with games has changed is I play way more games now than I did before. It's my job. Right. It's rad. Um, but sometimes I feel like I need to play certain games because that's kind of what's popular. That's what the viewers want to see. I, if I want to play a weird niche game just for me, I know that I will be losing viewership, which means losing money, which is a really weird way to look at games. <laughs> Period. That's a really weird way to look at games. Rude every time, but... Uh, what was starting, the first yeah. question? Uh, How'd you get into it? Getting well, into games. Did, all right. uh, good, because these two stories actually go together, so just give me 60. Um, so, uh, so the first game I ever played was called QBasic, uh, was called Gorillas, and it was a demo file for a programming language called QBasic, and uh, it was a game in which you were two gorillas that threw explosive bananas at each other, and then that was it. It was the first game I played against my brother, so he was eventually better than at me uh, than me than it. And, uh, but the thing was, to open the game, you had to look at the code of the game, and eventually I realized that in the code was the text of the main menu, and it would say QBasic Gorillas, and I removed that text, typed my own name, booted up the game, and it said Rami instead of Gorillas, and I've been a game developer ever since. So <laughs> that's kind of how that started. Perfect. Then uh, from that point on, I've been a game developer, so my relationship with games is really weird because I've never really been a gamer. I've always looked at games as something you can break, something you can modify, something you can mess with, so I've always been a modder. So for me, playing games has always been a thing of like, how do I modify this? How can I change this? How can I make it more fun? How can I make it more interesting? So for me, the most interesting thing in games right now is trying to find the games that nobody else is playing and see how they are broken and how they can be beautiful. That's it. You did it exactly Perfect. 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Flex on them. 
We have one minute for plugs. Let's go down the line. <laughs> Khalif. Spawn Away Podcast. Every Tuesday it drops. Every Thursday you can watch us on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Spawn On Me. We're on all the podcasting spots you can go to. And we have a really dope uh, charity stream that's happening uh, September 22nd to 23rd uh, for the folks over at Vote Riders. Uh, hoping to raise money for them so that they can get people ID so they can go vote. So definitely check that Very out. Very cool. Cool. <laughs> um, you can check out my work at giantbomb.com. Uh, you can also check me out the, on the Giant Beast cast every Friday and also on Twitter and most other social media platforms at my name, Abby Russell, or at YBBAAABBY. <laughs> Next. Uh, my name is Kate Stark. I'm a full time Twitch streamer on twitch.tv slash Kate. Um, I have a super wow. fun, I know, yeah, I have a super Kate. fun and positive <laughs> community and we encourage you to come over and hang out. I'm going to be starting streams back up probably on Wednesday when I get back from PAX, let's be honest. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Kate Stark. Um, and there's pictures of my cat on there sometimes and also like really thirsty bisexual memes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Rami Ismo. You can find my work, uh, at Flambeer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at dinosaur. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> drop by. Drop my, by my booth at some point on the sixth floor if you have some time. We have a new game. It's apparently announced since yesterday, so <laughs> when, check it out. When's it coming out? What's it called? <laughs> I'm sorry. At Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Eric Canius. I have a little thing on YouTube at ericandkelby.com. I'm also the video producer for League of Heels, so there's a VHS tape at Bandland on sixth floor. If you like League of Heels, please check it out. It's very cool, and everyone check out everyone else's thing. And thank you for coming to the show. That is the Personal History of Video Games, Chapter 3. Enjoy your packs! Woo!